Hi, again, this is Cher, me from my mother's daughter, Hand Spun. And in this video, I'm going to be following up on the slub yarn video that I just completed. Um, I'm just going to be going over different ways to ply slub yarn. It just gives you a little bit of creativity and ideas that you can do with it. I hope you guys can't hear Mabel crying outside the door. I actually locked my craft room door this time so that hopefully I won't get any interruptions beyond the muffled sounds of crying babies outside. Um, so I'm starting with my plying thread and my slub yarn. I'm going to tie them together just with a basic knot and I'm going to attach it to my leader. So I spun this yarn clockwise, so I'm going to be plying counterclockwise. And just a note on the plying thread that I'm using, this is a tensile, um, I believe it's a 10-2 warping, uh, warping yarn. You can get them. I got it from my local yarn store. I'm pretty sure Webbs has it. Um, cotton would work, just anything that's strong because you're going to be pulling on your plying thread. So just by begin spinning slowly, regular plying, you can tell just at a maybe 45 degree angle to each other, you get kind of this cute little wavy ply. And the texture in the slub yarn, going thick, thin, thick, thin, is going to give you some uh, fun different sizes in your waves. You can modify uh, the look by changing the angle of your slub yarn. So now my plying yarn is straight. My slub yarn is coming out almost a 90 degree angle to my plying yarn. And it gives kind of a shell. It's a good way to get shells. So I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit looser than the, the wave that we did just a moment ago. And with the different size slubs, are going to give you different size shells. Those are shells. So now to get beehives, it's fun, there's nothing you can't do with this. Um, you take it to a 90 degree angle and you want those shells to be a little closer and then you just take it and scoot it up. You don't have to scoot up the thin areas, we're just scrunching up the thick areas. And that will give you, let me do one more and then I'll bring it closer to the camera. And that gives these cute little beehives, and you can still see your plying thread in the thin areas, and then little beehive coils uh, in the thick areas. So continuing with that, I'm just going to, if you're familiar with super coiling, you know that it's kind of a 90 degree ply, and then you scrunch it all up. And that is what I was going to demonstrate for a friend. She was asking how I did this particular yarn. So Melissa, this is the yarn you were asking about. You just take them and scrunch them. And I'll do a few. Um, now, note this is going to take quite a bit of yardage because you're scrunching it all up on this pine thread and uh, you're not going to be left with a lot of yardage, but it's going to be real fat and bulky, so you're not going to need too much. So, but I'm going to create a little more so I can get the length I need to put it closer to the camera so you can see it. Unwind that a bit. Bring it closer to you so you can see. So it's kind of better. Almost looks like popcorn, kind of. So you can decide if you want to scrunch it completely like this, leave the thin areas um, plied and the thick areas scrunched. Do just a little squiggle. Oops, I'm getting caught up here. The thicker it is, the more you'll have to work to get it on your bobbin. That's okay, too. Um, if you want to only scrunch the thick areas and leave the thin areas, it just gives you options and creativity. And slub yarn is fun on its own, but then when you bring in the plying threads, um, it gives you lots of, lots of fun options that you can do. And I guess if you're really feeling froggy, you could take it and ply it uh, the opposite direction again and watch all these little bobbles open up as they get anchored down by that third ply. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. I'm not going to do it uh, with this particular one. Oh, here's one of those fat slubs that we did earlier. As you can see, that's a real big shell. You can scrunch it and get a real big bobble. And here's one of the thin ones. 
If you didn't see my previous video on how to spin slub yarn and change the size of your slubs, then uh, check that out. So if you have any questions at all, please just comment. Uh, send me an email at my mother's daughter handspun. Um, you can find me on Instagram at my mother's daughter handspun, and I'm also on Etsy at mom's daughter handspun. So thanks for watching, and check out my other videos. Um, I've got several on core spinning, slub yarn, um, how to spin. Uh, the art vats that I create and sell in my shop. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please comment. I love to hear from folks. So thank you. Have a good one.